Tonight I'm playing in my first live stream of 2023 and not only is it my first live stream of the year, it's also going to be the biggest game I've played in quite a while. It's going to be a 2-5-10 match the stack. Starting stacks are going to be 2,000 and then match the stack from there. I'm going to be playing against a lot of the same players I played against when I played in my last TCH live stream and I played the biggest pot I've ever played in my life against eBay Dave. He's not playing tonight, but a lot of the other regulars are. So hopefully we can play well, do well, win some money, get some good hands for the vlog. Anyway, I'll see you guys inside for the TCH live stream. I hope you guys have your seatbelts ready because you know what time it is. It's time to buckle up. This was not only the biggest game I played in, but this cash game session was the craziest, loosest, wildest action I've ever been a part of. There was many hands that were insane that I wasn't involved in. So if you want to go check it out, make sure you go to TCH Live Poker on YouTube to watch the full video. Also, make sure you subscribe to their YouTube channel. They have crazy, amazing, high stakes cash game action all week long. So check them out on YouTube. Let's get going in this 5-5-10 match the stack game. We started off with a $50 bomb pot. I didn't win, unfortunately, so now I'm stuck 50 bucks to start the session. We're gonna be in for 2,000, but by the end of the night, there were several 20K stacks across the table. Let's get into some hands. And one of the very first hands I get involved with, we are 2-5-10 with a $25 straddle, which was on most of the game. It folds around to Mustafa and he flicks in the $25 chip to call, and then I look down at ace jack of diamonds in a small blind. The graphics are actually wrong, I did not have ace-10 offsuit, I had ace of diamonds, jack of diamonds. So I'm gonna 5 exit here, being in the small blind, and I make it 125 bucks to go. Mustafa flicks in the call, as I expect him to do with so many hands, and this is where we can start printing money, as these players are gonna limp a lot of hands that our range has crush so in theory over time if we make hands and they make second best hands well we can make some money or we can just get them to fold their wide range on the flop turn or river so he flicks in the call and we go heads up to a flop of queen 10 4 with two diamonds so we flop ourselves the nut flush draw at the time i thought i could mix between checking and betting in this spot planning to check raise because we do have a really strong draw however after doing some solver study it looks like this hand wants to check call out of position so i do check and mustafa checks behind the turn is a seven of clubs, and this is where I think I make a bit of a mistake. Again, I think our hand just wants to check call. We have a strong hand, and it's a hand that can call a bet most definitely, so I should be checking, but instead I thought I could maybe start bluffing and get him to fold a lot of his air, so I put in a bet of $150. He makes the call with his combo draw, and we are headed to a river card, which is the three of clubs, so Mustafa does in fact make his flush. I check, he puts in a bet, and we can't do anything here except put in the fold. I would have loved to see myself check the turn, made a mistake mistake, but we learn and move on to the next hand. In this hand, the blinds are 2-5-10, and it folds all the way around to Mustafa, and he puts in the raise to $90, so he makes it 9x the big blind. Mustafa has one of the highest V-pips at the table, limping so many hands, hands exactly like he had last hand with a 9-6 of clubs. So when Mustafa puts in raises, I think he has hands like king-queen suited, king-jack suited, some ace-x suited combinations, and all the premiums like ace-king, ace-queen, and all the bigger pocket pairs like nines plus. It folds to me on the button, and I look down at ace-10 of clubs, so in this spot I can definitely put in the 3-bet, and the benefits to doing this is we can get the small and the big blind out of there, and play this pot heads up in position. The downfall of putting in a raise here is we have a very nice hand, and, and we don't want Mustafa to fold hands that are worse than ours, like ace-8 suited, ace-9 suited, etc. We also get to play this pot in position, and if we faced a 4-bet, we would absolutely hate it, as ace-10 suited is usually absolutely crushed, especially by this particular player who enters the pot with a raise. So we're gonna flat and go heads up to a flop of an absolute whiff. It comes 955 with no clubs. The pot is $270 and Mustafa really wants to protect his pocket tens as he puts in a bet of $375. The issue with this bet is yes, you do want to protect your hand. However, you're really only going to ever be called when you're beat and you're going to fold out all the hands exactly like I have that he has absolutely crushed. So in this case, we obviously are going to put in the fold and move on to the next hand. In this hand, there's not too much to talk about, except I'm in early position and look down at pocket fives, and normally limping goes against everything I believe in, especially at loose, passive, smaller games. However, this is a completely different scenario. If we limp here, there's a chance we can see a flop multi-way, smash it, and stack somebody. And if we raise this one, there's a high chance we're gonna get three bet by the two players to my left. So I decide to limp, and sure enough, Mr. O- 
there's multiple callers and then it folds back on me, definitely have the implied odds to see a flop with this hand, so I make the call. We're gonna go four ways to a flop of ace, ace, 10, so we absolutely whiff and we're already thinking about the next hand. It checks around, the turn is a jack, there's a bet, and I fold, but it's gonna be perfectly fine to mix in some limps in this game, especially because there's a lot of players who just wanna limp and see a flop, so I think limping is fine. So by this hand, it's been like 30 or 40 minutes since I've really gotten involved and played a spot. I look down at 6-5 of spades under the gun and I raised to $30. Gotta start mixing it up and trying to get in there as we have been extremely card dead and spot dead. Shop PokerFaceAsh.com if you want some merch. Safine is in the low jack and he has the beautiful ace 10 of diamonds he decides to isolate and put in a 3 bet and he makes it $90. Yacht Club wakes up with pocket 8s, he puts in the call, Mustafa's not going anywhere with his king jack off, and of course Habib with his 7 5 off is in there as well. So at this point I can't fold, let's call and make a strong hand. So we're going a lot of ways to a flop of seven, four, three with two clubs and we flop the absolute nuts with our five, six of spades and I look at the flop and I have to double check and make sure I'm not dreaming because then Habib puts in a bet of $700, so a massive over bet. Now I have to see the best way to play this, but as I count my stack, I don't think there's really any other thing to do here except rip all in for about 2K. It's a little less than a 3X raise over his bet. There is flush draws out there. If he has a set, he's not folding. And if he has some sort of combo draw, seven, six, or a seven of clubs, he's not gonna fold that hand. So I'm gonna put in all my chips. We are all in. Habib snap calls. We're only gonna run this one once as we have the nuts, let's hold. The board runs out clean and I scoop a $4,200 pot. Finally found a spot and now we are cooking. I folded for quite a while. I was up about $1,000 on the stream before this hand happened. The 2 5 10 $25 straddle is on and Randy limps in the low jack. Mustafa is next to act in the hijack and he raises to $90. It folds to me and I'm on the button and look down at Pocket Kings. What a dream spot being on the button against these two loose players. As I said before, Mustafa loves to limp so many hands so when he does put in raises, I think he's going to be heavily weighted to higher pocket pairs, suited Broadway hands, and of course premiums. So we want to charge these limpers, make them pay a price, and put money in this pot while we have the best of it. So I decide on a raise size of $350. They both call so now this pot is over a thousand dollars heading to a flop and the flop comes four five six with two clubs randy checks mustafa checks and now it's on me i've talked a lot about board textures on this vlog and a flop like four five six with two clubs and not holding a club in our hand is not the ideal flop we want to start piling money into the reason for this is because the board can get significantly bad for us if a seven or a three comes also if a club falls we are not loving our hand and the problem with this is if we start betting now and then the board changes drastically on the turn our hand will have significantly downgraded in value so i think it's totally fine to either bet about half pot on this board texture or check. And in this case, against these two wild opponents that could have hands like 7, 8, 5, 6, 5, 4 suited and all the sets, we're gonna check and see a turn card. The turn is a pretty awesome card that I was very relieved to see. It's the five of hearts. Randy checks and now Mustafa puts out a bet of $1,200, so it is an over bet. I think the best thing to do here is to call and keep all of his hands just like he has pocket nines in there. So I make the call and then Randy folds. The river is the three of diamonds, the exact type of card we were discussing on the flop. I'm not loving it, however, I'm pretty confident that my hand is the best hand at this point. I think Mustafa has a hand like maybe eights, nines, tens, jacks, something like that. Mustafa then reaches for chips and puts out a bet of $700. I think if we put in a raise in this spot, I think we're only gonna get called if we're beat. This is a blocker bet, however, our exact hand can't do much. So I flick in the call, he shows us pocket nines and we scoop a $5,000 pot. Well, in this hand, I completely missed the mark as I raise an early position with ace-queen offsuit. Yacht Club comes along the small blind as well as Mustafa, so we are going three ways to a flop of king, three, seven with two spades. They check it over to me and I have significant range advantage on this board. I was the pre-flop raiser and one of my best ace highs and there are some great turn cards we can continue barreling like a jack or a 10, obviously an ace, and if a queen falls, we can evaluate. I bet about half pot and go for $50. Only Yacht Club calls with his seven and Mustafa puts in the fold, so we head to a turn card. The turn is one of those great barreling opportunities, it's a 10. He checks it over to me yet again. 
I had completely misread Yacht Club's player type. I had perceived him the entire night to be extremely tight and only play really premium hands as he was showing down monsters. However, after reviewing the live stream, I realized that Yacht Club was playing a wider range. He was definitely a capable player, and since I hadn't seen too many weaker hands go to showdown, I just assumed he was pretty tight. So for all these reasons, I decided to check. However, I would have loved to see myself barrel, possibly even over bet this 10 to get him to fold a hand exactly like he has a seven. We can get him to fold eights, nines, hands like that. Even flush draws aren't gonna be priced into call if I over bet. So in hindsight, I really wish I would have thrown in a bet here, but I ended up checking. We went to see a river card. It, it checked through again because he had showdown value. And I thought there was maybe a chance that my ace high could be good a very small percentage of the time. However, he he rolls over the seven, and I said this. I'm the worst. <laughs> she goes, I'm the worst. Pretty bummed that I chose to just check this one through on the turn instead of following through with my aggression, but we learn, we move on, we make mistakes, and we'll live to see another hand. In this hand, there's a 2, 5, 10, $25 straddle on, and Yacht Club opens the action with King 5 of Clubs to $80. He picks up four colors, including myself and small blind with Ace Jack of Spades. I thought it'd be a little bit deceptive here to flat and try to keep all worse spades in, worse Ace X combinations in. Another thing to consider is being in the small blind, we would have to raise massive in this spot and then play a pot out of position if we get called, and most likely the way this game's going, we would get called in multiple spots. So we go a five ways to a flop of ace, king, deuce with one spade. So this is a pretty great flop for us. We all check it over to Yacht Club. He checks back. So now we're headed to a turn card, which is the four of diamonds bringing in the diamond flush draw. I can't let this one check through. We have a pretty strong hand. So I put out a bet of $100. However, I would have liked to see myself go a little bit bigger. I didn't realize that the pot was so big at the time. Yacht Club calls, so now we're headed to a river card, which is an offsuit four, so it was pretty much the best card that we could hope for in this spot. Now I'm chopping with any ace, as it's extremely unlikely that my opponent has ace-king. I think we can get value from any ace-x here, and possibly a king. So I decide on a size of $350, which is about half pot. Yacht Club goes into the tank and thinks it over and then correctly decides to fold, so nice fold by him. It's a little bit unfortunate we couldn't get some extra value on the river, however, we do scoop another decent pot. In this hand, the 2, 5, 10, 25, 50, 100 dollar straddle is on and I am next to act in the hijack and I look down at Ace Jack offsuit and I raise to $300. It folds all the way around to Habib and he makes the call with his queen five offsuit. He's been having a pretty rough night and he might have been a little bit tilted. So we're going to go heads up to a flop of king jack six with two spades. So we flop middle pair and we have range advantage on this board texture. He checks it over to me. Against some players, I'll mix between betting or checking. We have a made hand. We're not bluffing, but we're going for value. And against this particular player who is very, very splashy and loose and a little bit passive, who will just call a lot of bets with hands like open enders, pairs like jack 10, jack 9, even a hand like maybe a6 and all flush draws. He'll probably even peel one if he happened to have a hand like a pocket pair. So in this case, we are going to go for value. Don't need to bet too big and I make it $200. He obviously doesn't have anything to call, so he puts in the fold, but we win a very nice pot in this big straddled hand. After that hand, there really wasn't any more significant pots that I played, just small ones where I called raises pre-flop and then whiffed and folded on the flop. This was my biggest live stream cash I think I've ever had, and it was such a fun time. These players were wild and crazy, and again, if you guys want to watch the entire stream where there was massive all-ins, huge coolers, make sure you go check out TCH Live on YouTube. It was time to grab my chips, rack up, and cash out. That might have been the craziest game I've ever played in. Stacks were flying, chips were going everywhere, and honestly, the game got really big very, very quickly, and I wasn't quite prepared for how big and crazy that game would be, but I felt like I did my best and I've held my own. And honestly, in spots like that, when there's a lot of three betting, huge bet sizes and raise sizes, you gotta pick your spots carefully. If you just keep calling and playing passively and limping, and over calling in spots with marginal hands, you're just gonna leak a bunch of money. So I'm really excited to go over some of the spots that I played tonight. I know there's a lot to learn from and I hope you guys enjoyed and learned something from the vlog. So I was in for $3,000, cashed out with 7,093 for a profit of 
$4,093 and I am ecstatic that I played my very first live stream of the year and my very first bigger game and I was able to book a solid profit. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the vlog. If you did, would you do me a huge favor and go all in and like, comment, and subscribe? It would mean the world to me. We are just getting started on this crazy journey. It's only up from here. I'll see you guys next time.